I'd like to show you how to make one of these XY pads. So you get two values, one on the X axis, one on the Y axis, which you can connect to any controls that you like. We're just going to focus on this part today, just the panel part that you can see here. We're not going to implement these knobs as well. I'll do a separate video about these knobs, which I'll post on Patreon, but for today, we're just going to focus on the panel part. So let's go over to a new project and start building it. Okay, so I have a new project. I've got a panel here, which I've assigned a background color and an item color to, which we'll use shortly in the paint routine. Uh, we also need to change this allow callbacks to all callbacks. So now in our script, we need to get a reference to this panel. So let's change the name of it actually. Let's call it PNLXY. And we'll get a reference. Just right click on the panel, create script variable definition, and then paste that in here. And we'll put a comment. So now we'll assign a paint routine to the panel PNLXY.setPaintRoutine function G and we're good to go. The first thing we'll do, we'll get a reference to the bounds of the panel, the X, Y and width and height with this dot get local bounds, put a zero in there. And then we're going to fill the entire panel with its background color. So we'll do G dot fill all this dot get BG color. So now we've got a nice gray box. So now we need to draw a little dot that was circle. That's going to be the dot that we move around the X, Y. Uh, you could of course draw this as a crosshair or something more fancy, but we'll stick with a dot. So we're going to set the color to the panel's item color, g.setColor, this.getItemColor. So that's going to be that red color. And then we're going to use the function g.fillEllipse. And then it needs an area. Now we don't want to give it the area of the panel. So we're going to provide, well, we're going to give an X, a Y, a width and a height. So the width and the height, they're probably going to be fixed values. So let's actually declare those. We'll put them up here. We could also make them part of the panel's data property, but we'll just put them up here for now. So um, actually the width and height are going to be the same because it's a circle. So we'll just call it size. So we'll say size equals 30. So that's the width and the height. So we can replace W with size and height with size. Now we're not sure yet what the X and Y is going to be. That's going to depend on where we click and drag. So for now, we'll just put zeros in here. And if I hit F5, we should get a red dot up there. 30 might be a bit large. Let's make that 20. There we go. So somewhere here, we're going to have to do some calculations to actually decide what the X and Y are and uh, base that on the mouse position. But we won't do that just yet. The first thing to do is to get some data from the mouse. So we're going to use a mouse callback. So PNL XY dot set mouse callback. So there's our mouse callback. And we want to respond to the mouse being clicked on the panel and the mouse being dragged around. So we'll put an if statement here. We'll say if event dot clicked or event dot drag. And then everything else we do for those two events will go inside this if statement. So we're going to get the X value first of all, and we're going to store it inside the panels data object. So every panel has an object inside it called data and you can add anything you want to that object. So if we write this, we're referring to the panel because we're inside the panel's mouse callback. So this dot data, that's the data object dot X. So that's just something we've made up. We could call this anything, but because it's going to be for the X value, it makes sense to call it X equals event dot X. So this is coming from the event property and X is the X of the mouse. So that's given us the exposition of the mouse. And we're going to divide that by the panel's width this dot get width and that gives us the X position and then we'll just duplicate this and change this to Y and this to Y and instead of the width we'll use the height so that will give us the Y position there's going to be a little bit more to this in a minute but this is enough to start with so now we've got these two values we're going to trigger the panels control callback so we'll do this dot changed 
And we actually haven't made a callback function yet, so let's do that now. So we'll do uh, PNL XY dot set control callback on PNL XY control. And then we'll just create that function on PNL XY control. Okay, and then here we can print out that X and Y. So we'll we'll do that just for now, just so we can see what's happening. So it'll be component.data.x. So we can't use this here because we're not in the paint routine or the mouse callback. So instead of this, we use component, which is going to be the panel. And we'll put a call on there and then we'll print out the Y as well. There we go. Okay, so we shouldn't see the dot move because we haven't updated our paint routine yet but we should see some data output to the console when I click and drag. So there we go, we can see X and Y values here. And you see if we're all the way over at the left hand side, the X is at zero. And if we go all the way over to the right, it's um, one. Or oh, I'm outside the panel now, so it's above one. If we go to the top, it's uh, the Y is zero. And if we go to the bottom, the Y is one. So we have a range of zero to one on each axis, which is great because it, you can use it as a multiplier for any values. So if you're setting uh, continuous controllers or modulation values or whatever, you can just use this zero to one value and uh, use it as a multiplier to set those other controls. Okay, so we know we're getting the right value now. So let's just uh, call component.repaint. So I'm doing this in the control callback. You could do it in the mouse callback if you wanted to. It doesn't make too much difference where this is called, but it means that every time we move the mouse, we're re-triggering the paint routine. So we're updating how the panel looks. So now we've got that, we could just enter the X and Y in here, and we'd have to times it by the width or times it by the height. But it's a bit clumsy to write in here this.data.x and then followed by calculation. So we'll do it outside of this array and instead we'll just put x and y here and we'll actually declare the x and y that we're going to use just up here so var x var y and we'll fill these in so for the x it's going to be this dot data dot x times this dot get width so kind of the reverse of what we were doing down here and for the y it's this dot data dot y times this dot get height. Now you might be wondering why we're doing the reverse of what we've done here. Well that's so that we get that zero to one range because if we just take the x value without taking the width into account or take the y value without taking the height into account we're going to get a value that is somewhere between well in this case I've got a width and height of 400 so the x and y will be somewhere between zero and 400 and that's not a very useful value it's much better to have a value between zero and one. So that's why we're doing this. For, for drawing the actual dot, we do need the value to be between zero and the width of the panel and zero and the height of the panel. But to actually work with the data, we need it to be between zero and one. So that's why we're, we're doing this sort of reversal of what we've done down here. Um, so now if I hit F5, our dot's going to move around as we drag it. But there's going to be a little problem, and you'll see that if I go to the edge, our dot disappears off the edge of the screen, which is not what we want. So let's look at how we can fix that. Okay, so we need to prevent our dot going below zero and above one, zero and one. And we can do that using a function called math.range, which limits a value to a given range. So I'll just write it down here just so you can see what it looks like. Let's move that up a bit. So the function is math.range and it takes a value, in our case that's going to be either the x or the y, and it takes a minimum, so it'll be zero, and a maximum one. So let's say our value goes above one, it's going to lock the value to the upper bound, so it will lock it to one, it won't let it go any higher. And if it goes below zero, it'll do the same thing, it'll lock the value to zero. So let's write that in, so it's going to be math.range, and let's make a bit more room here, we'll just close that temporarily. So math.range, and this is our value, our x, and 0 and 1. And now we can do the same for the y, math.range, 0, 1. So let's bring that back in now, and let's hit compile there. And let's actually output the value so we can see what it is, this dot 
this.data.x, this.data.y, so we can see the x and y. So we can see it's never going below zero now, but what happens if we go all the way to the x? You can see it's locking the value of x to one. Let's bring it back. And down here it's locking the y to one, but you can see that our dot's gone off the screen. So the reason the dot's gone off the screen is because here we are locking the range, so it can never go above the width. But where we're actually painting it, we're now translating that one to that one and zero to the width um, or the height, and it's not taking into account the actual size of the dot. So the, the dot has a width as well. So the let's zoom in on this. So the x position and the y position of the dot is like this top corner here. So when that is positioned at one on the panel, it's like actually off the panel. So we need to take into account the width of the dot. So where we're calculating the x and y for the display purpose, we need to subtract the size of the dot when the x or y is greater than one. We need to subtract the size from the value. Now we can't just subtract it here, we can't just go like minus size because then that's also going to include when it's down this side as well, when it's at zero, which is no good, although now it works for this side. So we have to account for both extremes of the range. And it's pretty easy to do, we're just going to use that math.range function again, so math.range, again let's make some room here, and it's going to be, let me get rid of that, so it's going to be math.range zero, same as before, and in this case, it's going to be this dot get width minus size. And for the y, it's going to be math dot range zero. This dot get height minus size. So now that should lock to the extremes of the range. So we're doing it down here for the data x and y, which is our zero to one value. And we're doing it up here for our range that represents the actual drawn position. And actually we should output that to the console so you can see what that data is. So everything we've been looking at so far is zero to one. But if we do it up here in the paint routine, you'll see that the X and Y here is actually not zero to one. It's the width and the height of the panel. And you can see this value wouldn't be very useful for setting a modulator, like if you're trying to set a CC that goes from 0 to 127, you don't want to have to be calculating based on the width and size of your panel. And obviously the panel width and size could be changed, so you'd then have to update your calculations. So that's not the best way to do it, which is why um, we're storing two sets of data. We've got the data for drawing it, and then the actual data.x and data.y, which we can use for some purpose. So now let's put that to some use. Let's let's apply it. So let's imagine we have an LFO. Well, let's not imagine it. Let's add an LFO. There we go. And we'll add an intensity mod, which will be a CC modulator. And we'll add a frequency mod, which is also a CC modulator. Now I like using CC modulators a lot for this kind of thing because you have a smoothing value built in. Um, now obviously I don't want the user to have to be moving um, their mod wheel to control both of these at the same time, that'd be weird. Uh, but this default value knob can actually be used to set the current value. If, the, if no CC is being input from the user, you can see how the value is changing. So what I do, I set these to something like 94, some value that the user is not going to be assigning any of their controllers to, hopefully. I mean, I can put in the user manual, don't use 94, I'm using it internally, that kind of thing. So we assume the user isn't going to use this CC. And now I can link anything on my UI to these default value knobs, so I can control them and uh, get the benefit of this smoothed value there. So that's what we're going to do. So we need to get these MIDI controllers. So they're just called MIDI controller one and two. That's fine for our purposes. So we'll just uh, right click, create generic script reference, and we'll put them up here. So we're going to have MIDI controller one. Um, actually, let's put these into an array. We'll just call them mods, so I don't have to type out MIDI controller each time. And these can just be in an array. 
Okay, so now what we can do is we can take the x and y value we've got between 0 and 1 and apply it to these mods, and we'll do that in the panel's control callback. So first of all, we'll write local x equals component.data.x, and we're just doing this um, so that we don't have to keep writing out component.data.x, we can just write x and y. It's just to make it a bit simpler to write and also to, to read the code, make it a bit more legible. So we'll write mods zero dot set attribute mods zero dot default value. And what we're going to do is we're going to take 127 because that's the maximum value and times it by X because X is our modifier between zero and one. So now if I hit compile and we open our mod and we move along the X axis, we can see the default value moves between zero and 127. Now for the y, it's going to be a bit different because with the x, the far left is 0 and the far right is 1. But with the y, it's not the bottom is 0 and the top is 1. It's the other way around. The top is 0 and the bottom is 1. So we need to sort of flip the value. So we'll write mods one dot set attribute mods one dot default value. And to flip the value, it's going to be 127 minus 127 times y. And let's have a look at that. So now they should both move so 0 to 1. And as we go lower, the default value of the second one goes lower. So there we go. We can control both of them now. And this is a really nice way to control an LFO, especially if you're using it for simulating vibrato or something like that. So that's one way to make an XY panel in highs, and of course you can style this to look however you want it to, but the basic principle is the same. If you like the snippet for this video, it'll be posted on Patreon to my higher tier supporters, and I'll be posting another video there showing how to add uh, some knobs that are linked to the X and Y position of this dot. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and share it with anybody you think might be interested. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.